record on my computer. Okay. So thank you everyone. How did you do that? How did she get in all those pictures? <laughs> you you can ask Miss Claire after. That would be finally. So thank you for coming to our science tellers performance tonight. And I do want to say a quick thank you to the Bernard, Carl, and... Oh, sorry, I muted you. Hold on. If you want to unmute yourself, it's because I was... Uh... There you go. Unmute. There you go. Sorry. I, no, I, no problem. I wanted to mute everybody so everyone that's can fine. hear you. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I want to say thank you. To, so thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, this is the very first time we've ever had science tellers. and. I, I'm very excited about the show. Um, and I wanna say thank you to the Rosen Library Fund uh, for funding this program and allowing us to have them. Even though it's kind of funny, you know, that we have to have all of our programs on the computer this year, at least we get to have some fun times together. And we get to see each other's faces and enjoy fun things, even if it's on the computer for right now. So I think those are all my announcements. I am going to, we are recording. I think we're recording. Can you see? Yes, we are. Okay. And so uh, if anyone has any issues with that, you just let me know. But I'm going to turn it over to science teller Claire. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, here you go. Hello. All right, hello again. It was so nice to play with you just then. That was so fun. Anyway, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you to Seneca Falls Library for having Science Tell Us. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me today. We can have lots of fun. I'm so excited. So everybody, thumbs up if you can hear me super well. Yeah, awesome. All right, now. Throughout the show, there are going to be times that I go like this. And even though you're on mute, because it just helps us not be too much technical interference when you're on mute. But even though you're on mute, if I go like this, feel free to shout out loud at home if you're allowed, okay? You can shout as loud as you want if it's okay with your mom and dad, all right? So just shout out loud. And then, uh, so I'm gonna be asking you things like that, but also I'm gonna be bringing up questions on the screen throughout the show. It's called a poll. So when I click a question on the screen, I'm gonna read it out to you and there's gonna be a list of answers for you to choose from. And then you, from your computer, if you can, if you could click on which answer you think is right, and we can make scientific guesses, which is called a hypothesis, all right? And it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, it's how we learn, and that's why we guess, okay? So everybody, enjoy yourself. I'm going to first pass you over to Science Teller Rick, who is going to tell you a super cool story. Ready, Science Teller Rick? Hi, I'm Ricky, and I'm a science teller. A science teller is part scientist, Part story. Tell her. Tell her. That's right. When you mix them together, you get a science teller. And that's someone who uses really cool experiments to tell an amazing story. Story. That's right. You guys have been good at this. Today's story is called Dragons Return of the Ice Sorceress. Let's get started. A long, long, long time ago, there was a kingdom. In this kingdom, there was a castle. In this castle, there were two kids. Their names were Henry and Beth. Henry and Beth, however, were not supposed to be in the castle. But one of their favorite things to do was to sneak in the places where they shouldn't be. Suddenly, they heard voices. Someone was coming. They started to run. They ran down the hall and wham, crashed into someone. They looked up thinking that it might be the castle guard, but they were wrong. It wasn't the castle guard at all. It was the last person they wanted to run into. Freeze, what are you doing in my castle? You two are in big trouble. Now come with me. Yeah. Before the king could grab them, Henry and Beth ran, pushing past the king, ran down another long hall, and ran outside. Guys, gotta run. Everybody, move your arms like this. Okay, run. Woo! 
That was a close call. Henry and Beth started running back to the village. They were almost home when suddenly, look out! They dove to the ground just in time as something flew through the air right over their heads and disappeared into the forest. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! In the story, Henry and Beth saw something flying above their heads. Would you like to see what it looked like? Right here, I have a cooler. Inside this cooler, I have... Whoa! Whoa! Something cold. It's so cold, I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. In this cooler, I have... Dry ice! Dry ice. Now, is dry ice hot or cold? Cold! It's cold! It's so cold, it's 109 degrees below zero. And that's why I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. Everyone, stick out your hand. Close your eyes. Imagine you're holding an ice cube. It's cold. What starts happening to that ice cube? It's melting. It's melting. That's right. That means it's turning from a solid into a liquid. Okay, everyone, open your eyes. Hmm. Does dry ice melt? No. No. Does it turn wet like an no. ice cube? No. That's why it's called dry ice. Now, when you heat up dry ice, it turns from a solid, not into a liquid, but into a... Yes. 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 Now, what's it called when something turns from a solid into a gas? Evaporation? No. No, no that's from a liquid to a gas. Is it called condensation? No. no. No, that's from a gas to a liquid. Is it called procrastination? No, I'll tell you what that means tomorrow. <laughs> when a solid turns into a gas, it's called... Sublimation. Right here, I have one of my oldest pieces of equipment. It's called a film canister. I'm going to put a piece of dry ice in this film canister and it will start to sublimate or turn from a solid into a gas. A gas. Even though we can't see it, matter is gas. A matter is anything that takes up space. Now what takes up more space? A solid or a gas? A gas. A gas will expand and take up as much space as it can. Now when I put the dry ice in the film canister and put the lid on top, what do you think is going to happen? It's time to do our scientific guess, which is also called a hypothesis. Whoa! Oh my goodness. All right, it's me again. This is the time I was talking about that we get to make our scientific guess. I'm not going to say that word in case I get struck by lightning. All right, guys, so I'm going to put a, a question up on the screen. If you can click on the right answer, great. If you can't, don't worry, just think about it in your mind, okay? And then it is just the same thing. So the first question is how long will it take to explode? The film canister, when you put the dry ice into the canister and the lid on, how long will it take to explode? About 10 seconds, about 30 seconds, or more than one minute. Ready? I'm gonna do my little clock. All right, if you're still voting, don't worry, but if you're done voting, help me count down from 10 down to one, and the last five is gonna be slow motion. 10! Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bam, bam. All right, I'm going to show you the result. This is interesting. Oh, we got a lot of different guesses here. Check that out. So, about twenty percent of you. So, one person thinks about thirty seconds, and 40% of you say more than one minute, and 40% of you say about 10 seconds. 
Ooh. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click over to gallery view. So you guys, you can shout out right now. I know I can't hear you, but I can lip read. What do you think? A, B, or C? You can check. Ah, oh, I see them. Okay, awesome. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to science teller Rick and we're going to test our hypothesis. So like we just did, if you don't have your screen on, it's totally fine, like we said in the beginning. But if you do want to turn on um, your video on when I click over like that, it's kind of nice to see. So, all right. So back to Science Teller Rick. Let's test our hypothesis. <laughs> Okay, all right, now let's see what happens. Oh, look at that, it's level made. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love it. All right, now I'm gonna put the lid on top. Okay, here we go, guys. Test your hypothesis. Now. Oh, 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 so cool. Wow. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, it was. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. When we put the lid on top, we trapped the gas inside. The gas kept expanding, trying to find space, which in turn built up pressure inside of the film canister which made it pop up into the air. Awesome. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Bev saw something flying over their heads. Cool. They didn't see what flew overhead, but Bev had an idea. Maybe that was the evil eye sorceress. But Henry laughed. That's just an old story people tell to scare their kids. She's not real. Or is she? What do you guys think? What do you think? Do you think she's real? Hmm. Now, what would you do? A, would you run home? Or B, would you fall into the forest? Guys, what would you do? Shout it out from home. Would you run home or go to the forest? Ooh, good idea. That's what Henry and Beth are going to do. They're going to go to the Come on, let's go see what it was. Henry grabbed Beth by the arm and together they ran towards the forest. Meanwhile, high atop the castle tower, someone was watching them. <gasps> Did you see the lights up there? Look! It's those two pesky kids. They're heading into the forest. I'll stop them. The guard raced down the long hall. Yeah, you're gonna have to run faster than that, guard. Jumped onto his uh -oh. horse. Those horses are fast. Ah! Ah! Everybody out, help, help me out. And rode to the edge of the forest. distance. Running through the trees, he spotted Henry and Beth. The guards started to chase them. Henry and Beth started to run. They were fast, but the guard's horse was faster. Uh-oh. 
Henry and Beth need our help. Put your hands up and be like the trees in the forest. Okay, everyone, oh, put your hands up, be a tree. He got closer and closer. The hoofbeats got louder and louder. He rode alongside them. Just as he reached out, about to grab them, they dove off the path and disappeared from yes. sight. Okay, everyone, shh, shh. Hmm? Hmm. He looked right. Then he looked left. The guards saw something, but it wasn't Henry and Beth. It wasn't a person at all. It was a mysterious white cloud of fog. That's creepy. He felt very cold. Something wasn't right. He turned and rode off in the other direction. What was that? It was filling the entire forest. <gasps> Guys. Henry and Beth peeked out from behind the old tree they were hiding behind. The guard was gone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> in the story, Henry and Beth saw something in the forest. It was a mysterious white cloud of fog. That's right. We're going to do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Do you remember what it's called when a solid turns into a gas? Sublimation. Sublimation. Right here, I have a graduated cylinder filled with water. I'm going to add dry ice to that water. What do you think is going to happen? It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Oh, no, Why? oh no, every time he says hypothesis. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. All right, everybody, the next question is coming up on the screen right now. It is how big will the cloud of fog get? What do you think? Do you think it will fill the tube halfway? fill the tube the whole way or do you think it will go over the top what do you think place your guesses everybody and if you can't click it just think it in your head ready with the countdown 10 9 8 you can still guess if you haven't yet 7 6 Slow mo five, four, three, two, one, bam, bam. All right, guys, this is really interesting. Check this out. 100% of the people who voted said it will go over the top. I like the way you guys think. Well, I'm going to go on to gallery view so you guys can all shout out. I can lip read you. So, what do you think? A, B, or C? A was a little. C, B was a little bit more, C was over the top. C, I love it. I love how you're making the C with your hand, Marl. Very cool. All right, we are going to go back to Science Teller Rick and test your hypothesis. Ta -da! All right, it's time to test out our theory. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm excited. When we put the dry ice into water, the water makes the dry ice heat up and sublimate even faster. That allows us to see all the gas, just like a fog or a cloud. cloud. That's right. We can actually whoa, pour it in our hands. Look at that. Whoa. We can even pour it in our lab coats. Oh, I bet that's cold. Oh, whoa. Oh. The guard was gone, but that's when they saw it. Right there, the fog. It was coming towards them. What are they gonna do now? What 
would you do? Would you A, stay in the foggy forest, or would you B, warn the king? Guys, what would you do? Would you stay in the forest where it's kind of dangerous? Quickly, Henry and Beth ran back towards the castle to warn the king. Okay, help him run. Henry and Beth ran fast as they could. They saw the castle in the distance. Almost there. Almost Finally, there. they made it out of the forest. <laughs> but they were too late. What? <gasps> Everyone. Right there, standing in front of the castle, they saw her. It was the evil ice sorceress. I'm not afraid of you. Suddenly, the trumpets blared. The castle gates blew open. And the knights marched out. But nobody could have known what was going to happen next. The evil eyed sorceress stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. With a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down from the sky. When the bubbles popped, they released ice cold fog that froze the night solid. That's not cool. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! In the story, the evil ice sorceress stomps her feet. She claps her hands and she snaps her fingers. fingers. That's right. When she does, she makes bubbles of fog. We're going to do an experiment to show you exactly what that looked like. Right here, I have a flask. In my flask is water. Now, we're going to add a chemical to this water. So, that's important. We're going to add a piece of dry ice to the soapy filled water. What do you think is going to happen? It's time for our scientific guest, also known as a hypothesis. Oh. oh my goodness, every time. That's crazy. All right, guys, everybody look at the screen because the next question is about the bubbles. How many bubbles do you think there'll be in the flask when he puts the dry ice in? Do you think there'll be lots of tiny little bubbles? Or do you think there'll be just one big bubble? Another tiny. Oh, one big. All right, guys, ready for the countdown? If you're done voting, count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, slow mo, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, bam, bam. All right, guys, here you go. I'm going to share what people have voted. So have a look at your screen. So look at this. 29% of you say one big bubble. 71% of you say lots of tiny bubbles. All right, so A is lots of tiny bubbles. B is one big bubble for the people who couldn't click on their computer. What do you think, A or B? You can sign. Well, how do I make a B? Just like that? Or, yes, I like that, I like that. Or you can just have me lip read. A, B, one, two, three, go! Nice, I love it, this is awesome. All right, well, let's go over to Science Teller Rick and let's test your hypothesis. I think it's gonna be cool. Oh. Oh. 
All right. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. There's the soap. All right. Now it's time to add the dry ice. Here we go. to a gas. The gas is filling up the soap. And that's why we're getting so many bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. This is really cool. When the bubbles pop, you can see the fog inside of an escape. It's really cool. And this is what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress made bubbles of fog. But it wasn't the knights that she wanted. <laughs> Who does she want? Me? You? Right there, she found who she was looking for. King. Slowly, she walked towards the king. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released a giant bubble of fog. The bubble popped, releasing an ice cold fog that froze the king solid. And that's not cool. Then, ever so slowly, the evil ice sorceress turned around and looked out into the distance with a flash of her icy blue eyes. No. She caught Henry and Beth watching her. Run! Run! They started to run! No, Henry! Go, 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 go! They arrived at a sign with two locations, fiery mountains or frozen swamp. What would you do? Would you A, run to the fiery mountains, or would you B, head to the frozen swamp? Guys, which way would you go? What do you think? That's a good idea. Henry and Beth reached the base of the fiery mountains. There it was said the dragons lived. A dragon was Henry and Beth's only hope to stop the evil ice sorceress. Ready? They climbed up, up, and up the narrow rocky path, winding their way higher and higher into the mountains. With every step they took, they felt the ground getting warmer beneath their feet. As they got closer, they saw it was the opening to a cave. What would you do? Would you A, keep climbing, or B, go into the cave? What would you guys do? What do you think? That's what I was thinking. Go into the cave. Go on, Henry. With whatever courage they had left, Henry and Beth stepped inside of the cave. At once they heard a deafening roar. <laughs> they looked up. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were standing face to face with a dragon. dragon. Two 
children in my mountain cave. What are you doing here? Uh, okay, everybody. Henry and Beth needs our help again, okay? On three, yell, the evil ice sorceress is back, okay? You ready? One, okay, two, three. The, the evil, evil ice sorceress! Nice one. Roar. My fire should be able to melt her. Hey, never put out your arms. Let's fly. The dragon flew up in the air. Henry and Beth felt the powerful wind in their face and hair. Wait a minute. Wait. In this story, Henry and Beth flew through the air with the... Dragon! Dragon, that's right. While they were flying through the air, they felt how strong the wind was. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that was like. Awesome. Now, what's all around us that we need to breathe? Air! <sighs> air! Now, is air a solid, a liquid, or a gas? A gas! That's right. Air is made out of tiny little particles, too small for us to see. But if we can't see it, how do we know it exists? Because, because we can feel it. We can also see the effects that it has on other objects. Right here, I have a leaf blower. The leaf blower sucks air through this end and shoots it out at 140 miles an hour. scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Nice. You guys! All right, next question. So everybody look at the screen because the next question is coming up right now. What will happen to the toilet paper? It will fly up high, it will fall to the ground, or nothing at all. So what do you think? It will fly up high, it will fall to the ground, or just nothing at all. All right. Ready, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, snowball 5, 4, it's fun, you guys do it too, 3, 2, one, bum, bum. All right, I'm very cool. Nobody thinks nothing at all. So let me see. 22% of you say it will fall to the ground. 78% of you say it will fly up high. Very cool. So A, B, or C, fly up high, fall to the ground, or nothing at all. What do you think? One, two, three, tell me. Oh, I love it, I love it. Very cool. All right, well, we're going to go back to Science Teller Rick, and he's going to show us, and I have a feeling it is going to be awesome. All right, now it's time to test out our theory. Moving air has lots of energy. 
When the energy comes into contact with another object, like the toilet paper, it makes the toilet paper fly through the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Beth flew through the air with the dragon. All right, guys, let's go back to pretending we're flying. Ready? Pass out. Flying through the air, the dragon saw the entire kingdom below. The castle was completely frozen in ice. Right there stood the evil ice sorceress. She was watching. The dragon landed in front of the castle and put Henry and Beth down. I'll be right back. The dragon took a deep breath and released a blast of... Fire! Fire! <laughs> Not even fire can melt me. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and a flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down on Henry and Beth. Just when they thought all hope was lost, Henry and Beth heard a sound. Whoa. The dragon spread its wings wide apart and covered Henry and Beth like a giant umbrella. The bubbles popped, releasing their ice cold fog that froze the dragon solid. Then the evil ice sorceress rose up into the air and started flying towards them. What would you do? Would you A, face the evil sorceress? Or would you be? Find a place to hide. What would you guys do? I think I would hide at this point. What do you think? I think, right? Right? Henry and Beth started to run. Yeah, help him run. Henry and Beth saw an open window in the castle. They jumped inside. Down, down, down to the coal castle cellar. Everything in the cellar was completely frozen in ice, except for one thing, an old wooden barrel. They opened the barrel. It was filled with salt. As they climbed inside the barrel, some salt spilled out onto the ground and it started to melt the ice. Just then someone kicked the door in. No. I can see you come out of that barrel. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. The evil eye sorceress started to wave her hand. But before the evil eye sorceress could flick her wrist, Henry and Beth had an idea. They reached their hands inside of the barrel, grabbed a handful of salt, and on three, one, two, three, they threw it at her. All at once, the salt began to work. The evil eye sorceress broke out in a cold sweat and she watched as the salt melt through her icy skin. With one final shriek, awesome. the evil eye sorceress exploded into millions of tiny water droplets that fell like rain. There's no coming back from that. And just like that, the evil eye sorceress was gone. This time, for good. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <clears throat> In this story, Henry and Beth melted the evil eye sorceress with. So, she exploded into millions of ice droplets. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Okay, everyone, do like this. Okay. Okay, do it again. We breathe out CO2 or carbon dioxide. dioxide. That's the same thing that dry ice is made out of. Dry ice is just a solid form of carbon dioxide. Inside this cartridge is carbon dioxide gas. When we open up this end, carbon dioxide escapes very, very fast. 
I'm going to attach it to this tube. And what's inside of this tube? Nothing right now. We're going to put water inside of the tube. We're going to pull this lever and release the carbon dioxide gas. Now, what do you think is going to happen? It's time for our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Yeah! Oh, I don't think he's going to learn. Anyway, it is our next question, guys. Wonder what is going to happen. So, how wet will I get? Wait, me? Or science teller Rick? Or both? I'll leave that up to you. How wet will I get? Not at all, a little, or soaking wet. Hmm. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Bam, bam. All right, guys, this is interesting. I knew it. I love how you guys think. I think, because if it means me, I don't want to get wet today. All right, here you go. Here's the results. Nobody thinks not at all. I knew it. 25% of you say a little. 75% of you say soaking wet. Mm. All right, everybody, shout out. I'm going to see. Ready? One, two, three. What do you think? <laughs> All right, here you go. Well, let's see. We're going to go back to Science Teller Rick. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> now, let's count down from 10. Are you ready? Let's do it. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. And that's what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress exploded into thousands of little tiny droplets of water. Henry and Beth got right to work. They dragged the barrel outside the castle. Looks heavy. Lifted it high over their heads Good and idea. dumped salt all over the dragon. All they could do now was wait, and wait, and the salt began to melt the ice. The dragon started to move. It flapped its giant wings and flew into the air. Flying over the kingdom, the dragon saw everything still covered in ice. It took a deep breath and released a blast of fire. As the ice melted and the kingdom thawed out, a huge cloud of fog formed over the land. Wait a minute, wait a minute. At the end of the story, the dragon took a deep breath and let out a blast of fire. Fire, that's right. The fire melted all the ice and left a big cloud of fog. fog. This is an experiment to show you what that looked like. So right here, I have a bucket filled with hot water. Right here, I have dry ice. What do you think is going to happen when I put the dry ice inside of the bucket of hot water? It's time to make our scientific guess, okay. also called a hypothesis. I almost said the word hypothesis. Oh. oh, well. 
All right, everybody. Here you go. The final question of the story portion of our show. So how much fog will there be? I have a feeling where you guys are going to check off on this one. Will there be a little fog, a lot of fog, or way too much? I'm sure it's all relative, but you know. A little, a lot, or way too much? All right, let's do our little... Boo 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 Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, four, four, three, two, one. Bam, bam. All right, that's fun to do. Okay, this is very interesting. Look, I knew it. I knew it. Nobody says a little. I love it. It's just like the water. Thirteen percent of you say a lot and 88 percent of you mostly everybody said way too much i love how you think awesome all right now everybody just shout it out so i can read your lips or you can make your say the letter a b or c ready what do you think is gonna happen a little a lot or way too much nice okay all right we're gonna go back to science teller rick i have a feeling it's gonna be awesome especially because there's a big <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. I need your help counting down. Okay. Nine. 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 Eight. Eight. Seven. Six. The ice is sublimating very fast because it's in hot water. That's so cool. Oh, oh, oh. this is awesome. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. The dragon waved goodbye to Henry and Beth and headed back to her home in the mountains. Everything returned to normal. Suddenly, someone called for Henry and Beth. It was the king. Then they remembered that they were in trouble for sneaking around the castle. The king called for them again. This time, there was nowhere to hide. Henry, Beth. I've been looking everywhere for you. Because of what you did, our kingdom is safe. All hell, Henry and Beth. Woo! And your dragon friend, too. And from now on, you are allowed to sneak around the castle whenever you'd like. Cool. All's well that ends well. I love a happy ending, don't you guys? And that concludes Dragons, Return of the Ice Sorcerers. Did you have a good time? I did. Did you guys? Awesome. All right, guys, that is the end of our story part portion of the show. So as you could see, when I showed you that video of Science Teller Rick, we were talking, doing a lot of experiments with dry ice. Okay, he told you a lot of information. I can't expect you to remember all of it, but it helps if we ask, I ask some questions. It will help you learn, help you remember. So I'm going to put a couple of questions up on the screen here, just like I did before. And it's all about the dry ice. So you click what you think is right. First question is, what is dry ice? Is it the solid form of carbon monoxide, the solid form of carbon dioxide, or the solid form of carbon trioxide? All right, so A, B, or C, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, or carbon tri trioxide? Ready? <laughs> 
doo 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 nice job so far doo 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 and ten nine eight seven six four All right, guys, you are awesome because look, look at the results here. Every, all 100% of the people who voted said carbon dioxide and you were right. And if you thought that too, you were right. So dry ice is the solid form of carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide is the air we breathe out, right? We breathe in oxygen, our body uses what it needs and we breathe out carbon dioxide. And dry ice is the solid form of that. How cool is that? All right, the next question, everybody, is about the temperature of dry ice. How cold is dry ice? It's super duper cold. Is it zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold? Is it minus 32 degrees, which is 32 degrees below zero? Uh, or is it, is it minus 109 degrees, which is 109 degrees below zero, which is so cold, I cannot even fathom oh my goodness all right i'm just going to do the countdown from 10 all right because i think most of you have voted 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 bam bam all right we have some varied answers here and i'm going to show you nice job guys all right, so 13% of you, so one of you, say zero degrees, and another 13% say minus 32, and the six of you, the 75% who said minus 109 degrees, you guys got the right answer there. So carbon, uh, the dry ice is minus 109 degrees. That's 109 degrees below zero. That's so cold, guys. The, did you see science teller Rick? Remember, he had to wear gloves because it's so crazy that it's that cold that it actually burns your skin if you touch it. Isn't that crazy? Something's so cold that it burns your skin if you touch it. But it is. I've touched dry eyes before and it really, you need to use gloves. So, all right, our final question of our little quiz is about what takes up the most space? a solid a liquid or a gas so what takes up the most space a solid a liquid or a gas ready 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 You guys are awesome. Everybody, 100% of you got this right. 100% of you said gas. Yep, gas takes up the most space. And I'll tell you guys why. Because gas can expand. Like he said in the story, that gas can expand until it's as far as it can go. It'll take up as much space as it can. So that's why gas takes up the most space. Guys, you did such a great job. I have a bonus experiment for you guys. So before I get to hear your voices again, before we end, I'm gonna show you a bonus experiment. You can try this one at home, all right? Now, before you do any experiment, anywhere at all, make sure you have a grown up with you, okay? You are ask a grown up, grown up's permission and have them with you when you do an experiment at home. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna spotlight my experiment camera. I'm going over here to my experiment camera, right here. I'll put a little light on so you can see me better. Hello. All right. So here I have a bowl. So it's just like a little Tupperware container here. Inside the bowl, I'm going to put ice. Now, this is just regular ice that you get from your freezer. So you could probably, you know, probably have that at home. So just regular ice from the freezer, I'm gonna put in the bowl, put quite a few pieces. There you go, that's good. And then I'm gonna add water. Now I say water, you guys probably say water, right? because I'm from uh, the United Kingdom. So that's why I've got a funny accent. All right, so I put the water in right there. Now I have here some string. Now this is just like kitchen twine string, quite, quite heavy duty, stiff string. And then I'm gonna get it all wet in the water here. And then I'm gonna just put the string over as many of the ice cubes as I can. I want the string to be touching the ice cubes. 
or as many as I can. Now, most important ingredient, I'm gonna put salt. This is just kitchen salt, okay? Like in the story when the salt was poured over the ice sorceress, I'm gonna put the salt over the top of the ice and the string in the water, in the container. I'm just gonna cover as much as I can, okay? Now, I'm gonna click back over to the other camera here and we're gonna give it a minute or so and let it do its thing. And whatever it's gonna do, you guys get to guess and see what you think it's gonna, it's gonna do. So one more question gonna go up on the screen here. Um, actually, no, it's not because for some reason it's not quite working, but that's okay because I'm gonna ask it. So um, everybody, I'm gonna put you on gallery view and I'm gonna say either one, two or three. What is gonna happen to the ice cubes? Will they one, sink to the bottom? Will they two, will they stick to the string? Or will they three, snap the string? So one, ice cubes sink to the bottom. Two, stick to the string. Three, snap the string. One, two or three, ready? Hold up your fingers. I'm just gonna go like this because I don't wanna give it away. All right, some people saying two, some people saying three, two over here. Awesome, all right, very cool. I'm gonna flip back over to the experiment cam and I am gonna test your hypothesis right here. So let's see. All right, the ice cubes did not sink to the bottom. I don't think I saw many people put up their one finger. So let's see what else. Okay, well, let me just pick up the string and see what, Check it out, guys. Look at that. Did not snap the string. It's all stuck to the string. And pretty much every one but one ice cube. That's crazy. Wow, look how cool that is. I can swing it back and forth. That is so awesome. The string totally is stuck to the ice. So guys, this is how, I'll show you the science behind this now. Um, you know how when it's really, really cold in the winter time, uh, trucks come along and they put ice all over the roads and maybe your mom's or dad's or you might put ice on your driveway so it melt, uh, sorry, salt on the driveway. Did I say ice? Put salt on the roads, put salt on the driveway and the salt melts the ice so you don't slip. So that's what it is. The salt lowers the freezing point of the ice. So it melts the ice a little bit, but it's still so cold in there that the ice free freeze, the water refreezes over the string. Isn't that cool? Still, still stuck. That's awesome. All right, so guys, you can try that at home. And let me just tell you, don't worry if it doesn't work straight away. So many different things can affect a science experiment, right? So it's still stuck to my ice right now. But the first time I did it, I used wool yarn that you knit with. Didn't stick too well. So you might find a certain type of string that works. You might first find it. It doesn't work. Don't give up. Okay, never give up. That's why they call it an experiment. You try different things, right? Okay, I'm going to put, if you guys want to unmute yourself, I'm going to go around and ask to unmute. And um, put your hands up if you would like to um, answer a question. Oh, no. And I'm going to ask the question. Oh, yeah. Who has a favorite part of the story? What was your favorite Who part? Who wants to tell me what their favorite part? Okay, I'm going to spotlight hey, your I like, I love the dragon. Oh. It's you. It's you. What was your favorite part? Story for much longer because my eyes. What was your? You gotta tell them what your favorite part was. Bye. Bye. Hey, you the the ice on guy. Was you raised your hand. Parker, what was your favorite part? Longer. Because my tablet is almost oh, out. Of what was your favorite part? That's okay. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have mute. I should have muted. kept everybody else muted. I'm gonna mute everybody. Yeah. All right. And then, but I'm gonna allow you to unmute yourself. Only unmute yourself if you're up on the screen. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Clues. All right. So raise your hand if you want to add. Oh, here you go. Unmute. I'm going to spotlight you. Okay, Gavin, it's your turn. My favorite story is the dragon one. Yeah, did you like it whenever you saw the dragon? Yeah, I, I, I like nice the dragon, dragon. Doesn't he? So and he helped save the day, and that was cool. I like 
dragon one. All right. Okay. Who else? Let's see. Hands up if you had a favorite part of the story. Who had a favorite experiment? Hands up if you have a favorite experiment. Oh, I see one. All right. There you go. Uh, I'm going to spotlight you. Hello. What was your favorite experiment, girls? Um, um, the ice guy went away. When the ice, when the ice, the one for when the um, ice sorceress went away and the water. Yeah, that's cool. I got a bit wet there. <laughs> I only have five percent left. Who said that? Wait. That was Elise. Me. Where's it's Elise? okay. It's okay, Elise. Do you want to oh. tell your part quick? Your favorite part? Is that? Oh, right here. Yes. Same screen. My favorite part was. There you go. All of the times that <laughs> they said when those storm clouds came. Oh, oh. The, when he said the hypothesis and the, and it went. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, I, that makes me laugh too. I really like that part. That's cool. I'm so glad you said that. All right, hold on. I'm going to go back and I know, yes. Oh, you're asking, you're waiting so patiently. I'm going to spotlight your video right here. Go ahead, Harper. Um, my favorite part is when he, mm -hmm. like, he frees the kingdom. It, um, it was like, it looks so real. Yeah. Yeah, it really did. And I, I love it like that. Like, it's, it's really fun where you can, you know, it, it's a great video to watch because it does look so real and it's fun to be a part of the action. So, um, is there anybody else? I love it because you know everybody's names. So you can like call people. So if you see anybody else, I don't want to leave anyone out if anybody else wanted to say something. No? Marina, did you have a favorite part? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Marina. We can spotlight your video. Go ahead. There you go. My favorite part was when they went into the cave and see the dragon. Oh, love that part. And uh, let me say, you know what? I don't get to hear you guys. Did you guys all shout as loud as I did? The evil eye sorceress is back. Did you shout loud? I hope so. It's fun. All right. Well, um, I will pass you back um, to your librarian in case she wants a few more words. But before I do, I just want to say to you guys, thank you so much for being an awesome audience. You guys were so good. Thank you. You guys did so great. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun too. And I hope one day I get to meet in person. That would be totally awesome. Yeah, that would be super fun if you could come actually visit our library maybe next year. I would love to. Yeah. How far, are you quite uh, northern New York? I'm so not sure. we are between Syracuse and Rochester. Okay. Yeah, so I, not, I think about that. Not too, too bad. Yeah. Yeah, I would totally come. Um, all right. Uh, did everyone have a good time? Give a double thumbs up if everyone had a good time. Yeah. I know. It's, it's, we have some friends who are getting a little sleepy, I think. Oh, <laughs> they well, had a lot know. of swimming and a lot of sun today. But I hope you learned some cool science things. And it was a really fun story. And uh, I saw some people, you know, flying in their house. And they, everyone was being a tree. And awesome. it was really fun and interactive. So thank you, science teller Claire. Can everyone say thank you? Thank you. OK, thank You're you. welcome. All right. So remember to thank my you. Tonight's code is dragon eight, no spaces, if you are logging in to read squared. And if you are joining us tomorrow morning for our gloop, glop, slime, and dough, then I will see you at 10 o'clock. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, guys. Bye.